What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to take a look at the PC performance for the early access version of Halo Wars Definitive Edition. And yeah, it's on PC, so that's pretty cool. Stick around. To start things off, as always, we will go ahead and go over the parts in the test bench, which is an i7-3770K, overclocked to 4.4 GHz, mated to an Asus P8Z77 motherboard with 16GB of DDR3, and it is all running on a PNY solid-state drive, it's 500GB, and it's all powered by a Corsair AX860i. All of the details will be in the description below. The benchmark run will be actually in the campaign. It's going to be chapter four. A lot of this is because for some unknown reason, you can't save skirmishes, which really pisses me off because I was just going to set up like a save game with two massive armies and then let them battle out. And that was how I was going to do it. But that wasn't the case because I guess they just forgot a save feature. That's terrible especially for an RTS game where those games can go forever. That being said, it's going to be the mission four and you're going to load in and you want to wait until the intro scene is done because the intro scene is actually kind of does that old Xbox 360 stuff where it's already pre-rendered in kind of a cut scene, which is, uh, yeah, just make sure you wait until it lands and then you have full control. Once that starts, you're going to go ahead and press the page up button until you zoom all the way out and then press E scroll over to the right where all the enemies are and just move all the units right in front of the sign and then let the battle just kind of go whichever way it goes and once that's complete it'll show three activate three kind of um, objectives once those objectives are activated that's when I stop the benchmark of course I had to use present mon to go ahead and capture this because it is a UWP game and recording it was a little tricky as well where I did have to go ahead and pull either a screen capture or I had to use a capture card because there are no hooks and even DX Tori was having having a lot of issues with it as well. So there's not a lot of good capture options right now. So let's talk about settings. All the settings are gonna be maxed out. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't actually really a resolution setting. And as you can see here, what they have is basically a high resolution on or off. And as best as I can tell after some screen caps and some formal kind of analysis, we're looking at either 1080p or 4K. Now all of these benchmarks as a result are going to be in 4K with the high resolution box tick. Now since it's an older game it's not near as demanding especially on the GPUs as you'll see here in a second. But if you're having FPS issues you can turn the high resolution off, bump down to 1080p and you'll get a huge like a double FPS bump as you can see in the chart here. The other two kind of settings that matter a lot are going to be shadow quality where you can get about a 20% change in FPS and anti-aliasing where you can get another about 20% change in FPS depending on turning it on or off. The rest of the settings didn't really appear to do much and I did turn them on and off and reboot the game to make sure that it was actually turning those settings on or off. I don't know. That's just the way it is. It wasn't relevant enough for me to put them into the chart. I felt like these are the three you guys need to focus on. So hopping into the benchmarks, we can see that we have pretty much uh, RX 462 gigabyte that I've added to the benchmark kind of testing here. And I did pull out the GTX 1070 for right now. I hope that I will be able to get that one of those back in and start uh, doing the GTX 1070 again. If you guys are interested in the Titan kind of numbers for these performance reviews, let me know in the description below. It's in my main rig, so it kind of might not be a fair fight as it is running on a rig with 32 gig of DDR4 and on a 6700K. And so I just, I, I don't really know if I really want to do that. But that being said, we got some pretty good numbers here. Mind you, this is 4K. So with a two gigabyte RX 460, which is about a $99 card, we had a minimum FPS of 17.3 with an average of 26.5 and a max of 45.6. Of course, of course, turning it down to 1080p pretty much makes this game perfectly playable on every card currently out. 
if we bump up to the four gigabyte model of the RX 460, we had a minimum FPS of 19.3 with an average of 30.5 and a max of 59.1. Now, if we bump all the way up to the RX 470 four gigabyte, we get a minimum of 32.7 with an average of 52.6 and a max of 89.2. Now, to me at 4K, this is going to be the card for pretty much the minimum spec card to play Halo Wars Definitive Edition in 4K. Now, if we bump up to the GTX 1050 Ti, it's pretty impressive that it actually does beat out the RX 470, and you're gonna see this trending with the Nvidia versus AMD theme here. We have a minimum FPS of 42.6 with an average of 57.9 and a max of 91.5. Perfectly playable in 1080p, and for a $130 card, that's pretty cool. And actually, excuse me, pretty playable in 4K, not 1080p, and that is impressive as hell for a $130 card. Now, if we hop on up to the RX 480, it actually does beat out the 1050 Ti, which I would be super worried if it didn't, but it had a minimum FPS lower than the 1050 Ti of 41.7, with an average of 59.9, and a max of 100.8. Eight. Beating it out is actually the EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte model with a minimum FPS of 63.3, an average of 86.2, and a max of 129.2. Now this is pretty awesome because at a $200 mark, you're getting 4K 60 FPS in Halo Wars Definitive Edition. Hopping all the way up to the biggest daddy of the bunch that we have today is going to be the EVGA GTX 1066 gigabyte. It is the super super clock trim and it had a minimum FPS of 67.2 with an average of 95.3 and a max of 142.4. So in conclusion, it's important to note that this game is currently in early access and there aren't drivers for Nvidia or AMD currently. So things could change as the development progresses and once the game actually fully releases. At that point we'll have to take another look and see if the performance for AMD has improved but at this point it's quite obvious that Nvidia is winning this battle and not by just a little bit but by a lot. So those are the numbers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you guys want to see these charts early you can go to my Patreon at Patreon dot com slash son of a tech and I post all of these for the patrons only section and you can kind of get a hint or a kind of uh, early access to the to the charts because I do work really hard on the charts I, I guess I'm putting it behind a paywall that's the way it goes anyways until next time I'll see you next Tuesday